transistors. Transistors are basic elements in modern electronic amplifiers. A simple bipolar junction transistor includes two PN junctions in a sandwich configuration, which may be either PNP or NPN. So here we have PNP, here's NPN. NPN configurations tend to be more popular, so we'll look at those in greater detail. And we've got names for these various pieces, okay? So here, P, that's the emitter, which is over here. The collector is the other P, right here. And the middle is the base. And what are we looking at? We're going to be doing NPNs. So in that case, our base, once again, it's in the middle, the P, this time. The collector is over here. And the emitter is over on this side. And notice we have three leads there. Where the diodes had two leads, we have three. When a battery is connected across the emitter and collector of the transistor, one side of the transistor will have forward bias and one side will have reverse bias. The reverse bias prevents the current from flowing. The transistor is off. So forward bias, that's where the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the left side of the NP junction over here, this interface right there. The reverse bias is the positive terminal of the battery connected to the right side NP junction. That's over here, the collector basis interface. And we have conventional current going this way, coming out of the battery, and the electron flow is opposite the direction of the conventional current. Connecting a second battery across the emitter and the base, like a forward base diode, increases the number of electrons entering the emitter. So we're showing an electron flow here. And again, remember, the electrons are really flowing. Conventional current is just a, just that. It's a convention to analyze circuits with. So we have electrons coming in here to the emitter. The emitter is usually very heavily doped to begin with, further increasing the number of electrons without locations in the crystalline lattice. So we've got these electrons coming out of the big battery, and then we have the smaller one on the top adding to it. Note again, there are three terminals for current flow, the P region and the two N regions, right? Current, current, current. Typically, the base right here is thin and lightly doped. The increased number of electrons entering the emitter from the top circuit shrinks the depletion region. With the smaller depletion region and the emitter's high doping, electrons are able to flow in the bottom circuit through the emitter. It increases the flow. So what we have is a small current in the top circuit controls how much current is going through the bottom circuit. A transistor can act as a current controlled switch where the current supplied by the small battery makes the current in the lower circuit possible. Additionally, the lower circuit will amplify any signals created by the upper circuit, right? Because you're sending a small electron flow there but that will increase the electron flow from the battery here by shrinking that depletion region. And here's our transistor symbol again. The base is over there. Here's your emitter and here's your collector. The operation of an NPN transistor can be analyzed when it is included in this circuit. Over here, we're showing the direction of the conventional currents. This is the current entering the base. This is the current entering the collector. VBE, or base emitter, is the base bias voltage applied to the base by the battery EB over here. VCE is the voltage maintained between the collector and the emitter, and that is supplied by this battery EC. And here's your output. This is the current that is going to operate some piece of electronic here. When VBE is positive, which is forward bias, the conduction electrons in the emitter are attracted to the base. So they're flowing like this, emitter, base, and then through into the collector. Notice how the electrons are flowing opposite the conventional current. Since the base is very thin, about one micrometer, most of the electrons flow right across into the collector, which is at a positive voltage. Right, there's your positive voltage, so your current is flowing like this, and it can be picked off here to use for other purposes. The electrons flow opposite to the direction of the conventional current, just saying it again, and conventional current will be shown on the next slide. 
Because of the electron flow, a large current, I sub C, flows between collector and emitter and a much smaller I sub B through the base. A small variation in the base voltage over here due to an input signal, right, if we had an AC signal here changing, causes a large change in the voltage drop across the output resistor over here. I sub C is greater than I sub B. Hence, the transistor is amplifying the small signal over here into a larger voltage over here. It's an amplifier. If the input signal oscillates right there, like it would for music being played on a CD player, this transistor configuration acts like an amplifier, so the music can be heard across the room. You would feed a much larger current over here to your speakers. A further refinement in semiconductor technology is the integrated circuit. By depositing layers of material and etching patterns to define current paths, the functions of many transistors, capacitors, and resistors reside on a single square of semiconductor material that may only be a few millimeters wide. A further refinement in semiconductor technology is the integrated circuit. By depositing layers of material and etching patterns to define current paths, the functions of many transistors, capacitors, and resistors reside on a single square of semiconductor material that may only be a few millimeters wide. Integrated circuits are now the foundation of computers, television, calculators, cameras, and electronic instruments that control aircraft, space vehicles, and now even cars.